the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us greet one another with words of hope, with words that come from the wellspring of love flowing within us because of our encounter with the living Christ. The peace of Christ be with you always. Come on in and find some rest. We need that rest for we are weary. Come on in and discover peace. We need peace for our spirits are weighed down by troubles. You have come to the right place. Our Lord is here waiting for you. Thanks be to God who brings us rest and peace. Amen. Merciful and loving God, we are so grateful for your redeeming love for each one of us. We confess that there have been times of doubt in our spirits. We confess that when the times of difficulties are upon us, we don't always believe that you will take our burdens. We feel we have to always be in control, trying to demand the desired outcome. Help us to place our trust in you. Remind us that you surround us continually with your care. You never just let us go to drift aimlessly about. Open our hearts and spirits again to your healing powers. For we pray these things in the name of Jesus, the one who will take our burdens and give us peace. Amen. 
Hear the good news, dear friends. Jesus releases us from our burdens. Place your whole trust in his love. Amen. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your kingdom, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fool of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is taken from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. 
You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. And our second reading is from Romans chapter 7. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading for today is taken from St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. After the last number of years, years in which we have endured a pandemic, racial tensions, war in Ukraine, hyperinflation, societal upheaval, the rise of conspiracy theories that often dwarf the best fiction out there, climate change that has accelerated beyond any trajectories climate scientists had predicted, and general antagonism in our communities that has driven rifts between friends and families. Jesus' words are like balm to our wounded soul. They are certainly a bomb to mine. The world seems to be bearing down harder than ever and is easy to lose hope. It is easy to find oneself adrift and wonder how we can anchor ourselves again when nothing seems permanent. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <clears throat> that is not to say that God's call in our life should ever be trivialized. It is, without a doubt, the hardest thing that we will ever do. <clears throat> Sometimes it may feel easier to simply surrender to the darkness. But where the darkness offers only despair and the annihilation of our hopes, our dreams, and our love, God's way is the way of life. It is the way that offers hope to the world and to us. And as we journey, we come to know that we never walk alone. God is there, and that is why we can say our burden is light. For God is carrying that which would be too much for us to handle, too much for us to bear. The call we have as Christians is best exercised when we do so knowing that it is God's love that we are bearing to the world, and it is out of God's strength that we are able to do this. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, but we have heard this week in and week out since Pentecost. We will keep hearing this throughout this long season of green. But what we may not always hear is the promise that we will find life in the call. We will find life by coming to God. We will find life when we, in all our weakness, in our sorrows and fears, in our pain and anxiety, come to God and lay our burdens at the foot of the cross and say with an honesty that we cannot that we cannot keep going. It is too much. We may feel like a failure when we say those words. Our society doesn't exactly treat broken people kindly. A broken person is a weak person, and weakness is something to be shunned, scorned, rejected. The irony is that this mentality of upward mobility only serves to break us further. It's, it lets death seep into the cracks of our life and shatter us completely. For my work, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As it turns out, we are not weak when we realize we are broken. We are human. We are human and we ignore that fact at our peril. When we come to the cross desperate and frightened, we might expect some form of retribution, perhaps for not trusting enough or for taking on too much or for not praying enough. But what we find is a God whose love is boundless. And in that love, God lifts from our shoulders the killing burden and speaks words of love. This burden was never yours to carry alone. Let it go. Let me carry it. Let me set, Let me set you free. Let me give you back your life. When I went to Mexico on the Rural Development Exchange, I was very young. I had never done anything like that before when I was homesick. I didn't want to be there. It was too scary. I just wanted to go home. But the group of people I journeyed with for those seven months of the exchange were amazing people. They helped me through that difficult time, and in fact, they helped me grow. They kept me grounded through the difficult months until I could find my footing and make the program my own. I often look at that time as one of the most fortunate, formative in my whole life. It set my feet on the path that I still walk today. And in large part, it was because of the people I knew and loved on that exchange program. They were God's love made manifest in that time for me. One of my friends, one of the most brilliant people I have ever met, really looked after me. I remember sitting with him at the side of the road one day and talking about God and the nature of reality for hours. He looked out for me like a big brother, and I think that I gained my lifelong love of philosophy from our conversations. Although our paths didn't cross as often after the exchange ended, I always considered him a dear friend, and I will always be grateful for all the ways he helped lift the burden of sorrow off my shoulders and made that trip such a wonderful experience. Earlier this week, I visited him in hospital. He is in palliative care. An issue cropped up over a decade ago that, as it turns out, was irreversible. Although he has managed to live a lot longer than anyone expected, it looks like he may not last a lot longer. The sorrow I feel at acknowledging that is hard to put into words. Always he was the one who offered support, and there I was at his bedside, 
offering what compassion I could, helping him with the TV and with, the, with, with his tea. In a small way, I wanted to offer back to him the same care he once offered to me, although, comparatively speaking, my offerings were minuscule. It doesn't seem right that a man of his gifts and good heart should have to face this. It doesn't seem right that anyone should. And it would have been easy to let that visit just be another burden around my neck. Yet since that visit, I remember everything my friend was and is still. He was someone who was larger than life, who always soaked life in and experienced every moment to its fullest. He was someone who could make you smile and laugh by just being around you. He was someone who demonstrated some of the very best of what it means to be human. Although it hurts to see him like this, the visit reminded me all of all the ways in which I saw God at work in his life, all the ways in which he lifted heavy burdens from people's shoulders through his love and caring. And I realize that the greatest way to honor my friend is to do as he did and to be an agent of love in all that I do. I certainly have tried throughout my life, but he has reminded me that the act of service can be a truly joyous one. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We experience that blessing in many ways through our life. I have experienced it through you and all the people that I have served. I can only hope I have offered that same blessing to you in some way. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In our darkest times, may we remember this promise promise of a God who lifts the killing burden from our shoulders and breathes life and love back into us. May we remember this as we surrender our killing burdens at the foot of the cross and look up to see that God has taken what would kill us and has given us back life, just as God did in the cross, just as God does every day of our life. Thanks be to God, for God's yoke is easy and God's burden is light. Amen.
the whole church, we affirm that we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. With people everywhere, we affirm that we believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. With all the saints in light, with us now and gone before, we affirm that we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Move among us, O God, give us life. Let your people rejoice in you. Make our hearts clean within us. Renew us in mind and in spirit. Give us again the joy of your help. With your spirit of freedom, sustain us. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made, rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders of all levels, national, provincial, and local, to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need, remembering especially today Christine Bauer, Taryn Covey, and all those that we take a moment now to remember. Make your presence known among all who suffer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship. Encourage children in their learning and growing, and watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. O God, as the summer months continue, we continue to pray for rains to nourish the earth, sunlight to bring forth the life from the soil, and good patience as we rest and relax over these fleeting, warm summer months. May we enjoy the opportunity to be out in your created world, and may we learn to appreciate again how interconnected we are with this glorious home that you have given us. Help us, O Lord, in all that we say and do to be good stewards of this world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the contexts we encounter. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God in community, holy and one, may we never be apart from you, even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, we have seen your glory, felt the touch of your love, and felt your presence with us. With joyful hearts, we offer you our gifts. Having heard your call, we offer you our lives and our service. Amen. announcements for this Sunday. Um, a reminder about my vacation time. Um, next week I'll be away due to being a resource pastor at P or out at Hastings Lake. That doesn't mean I'm not reachable. Um, obviously I'd come back if there was a pastoral need and I'll still be here for Sunday, this coming Sunday as well as the 16th. And then I will be away for holidays again from July 17th to 23rd inclusive and the 23rd service will, the in-person service will be led by our church council again. And on that note, for the next two pre-recorded services, um, there won't be an announcement time simply because I won't have the most up-to-date announcements, so there won't be that portion of the service to end it off with. Uh, big thank you to all those who are cleaning out our, our beds in the east and west side of the building. Ruthie and Bill, as well as Walter and Marion. Big thank you to both of you, or to all four of you, I should say, for your work cleaning out those beds. Also, my bulletin printed out weirdly today. We have a number of birthdays this coming, coming week. We have Darlene Kinney, Brenda Kinney, Ray McCubbing, Brendan Tim, and Macy McCubbing. We also have an anniversary, Terry and Shirley Kennedy. So let us say a word of prayer for them. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we lift up before you today Darlene, Brenda, Ray, Brendan, and Macy, all of whom are celebrating birthdays this week. May they be filled with the blessing of family and friends. And may their year ahead be filled with the knowledge that you walk with them in all things. Thank you, O Lord, for their presence in our midst and for the gifts that they share, for the ways in which they are lights of your love in all that they do throughout the world. Bless them, O Lord, in their year ahead and help them to know that whatever it is they face, they face it with you by their side, giving them strength and love and hope at all times. And so we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we lift up before you today Terry and Shirley, and we give thanks as they celebrate another anniversary. Thank you for the relationship that they have had, which you have helped to foster, the love that they share, and the relationship that they have grown all these many years. Bless them, and may they have many happy years ahead as they walk with one another knowing that you walk with both of them as well. Thank you again, and bless them in their relationship and in their years to come together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you have a blessed week ahead. 
I hope that you can get out and enjoy the winter, the summer, I almost said winter weather, the summer weather and really enjoy God's created world. And we'll talk to you again soon. Stay safe and stay healthy. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.